Hi everyone, my name is Tor and I work in the Code Refinery project. Hi, my name is Bjorn and I also work in the Code Refinery project. So let me share my screen and let's have a look at the reproducibility lesson which we'll be talking about briefly. It has a number of intended learning outcomes that you can have a look at with the lesson. Uh, it's a mix and match of different topics. Let's have a look at the motivation part first. We start lightly with a few comics and a general discussion about reproducibility, what it is, why, why it's a problem sometimes. And then we show you this uh, pyramid here, where uh, we put all the topics uh, in this context. We talk about uh, dependency management and containers. And we also talk about um, scientific workflows. And all uh, experiences that you have that you can relate to this is valuable given when you give this lesson. Absolutely. So personal anecdotes, difficulty reproducing other people's papers, stuff like that. It's quite interesting to share with the learners because everyone has some sort of relationship to reproducibility in research. People think about it and people worry about it. So let's go back to the overview. Let's just dig into two of these lessons, uh, two of these episodes, dependencies. Uh, here we talk about the challenge in general of uh, managing dependencies and the challenge in um, running code that's five years old or 10 years old and what you should do in order to make your code runnable in the future. So we talk about uh, these different tools here. And we often have to explain the difference between PIP and CONDA. And that's often related to personal preferences, preferences. And since there is not that much big difference between these two, two tools. Yeah. So the key learning uh, outcome here is for people to realize that you can manage dependencies automatically with requirements.txt files or environment.yaml files. So we briefly introduce PIP and CONDA. We show how it works, uh, some of the most common commands. And then we have an exercise with Conda on how to create and export Conda environments. And then we give an overview of a few other tools out there for other languages as well. But the focus is on requirements files. Uh, let's also have a look at this episode here with uh, the scientific workflows. <clears throat> The scientific workflow is focusing on how to repeat uh, a workflow, how to recreate a result. And there are several ways to do this. Uh, but the most important one is the snake make, which we kind of end up with. Yeah, so we show a few different possible solutions to working with workflows, starting very simple, clicking in a GUI, running things manually, scripting things yourself, and finally using a tool like snake make. We talk about snake make, but the message here is that there are many tools out there that can suit different needs and different people. But we do discuss snake make, we show uh, how it works with the rules here, uh, how you specify them, how you run snake make, uh, some pros and cons of snake make here. Uh, and then finally, uh, we have an exercise with snake make. And there are two exercises. One is getting familiar with the tool. The other one is on how you can combine SnakeMake with Conda environments. Let's lastly have a look at this episode here, sharing code and data. <clears throat> That's uh, about creating a digital object identifier for your project and sharing that DOI with others. Yeah, the exercise is done here. So we show people how straightforward it can be to get a DOI for, for data or for code or any other research output. And we discuss it here in the context of, of the FAIR principles, which many participants often haven't heard about. Okay, I think we're done.